What are we talking about? Mexican street corn on the grill. But hey, there's so many ways you can jazz up your corn recipes by just using grilled corn that has all that flavor, that good smoky taste. And we blend it with a great chili lime sauce. Come on, I'm going to the corn patch and you can help me shuckle. Hey, thank y'all for following me up to camp. Yep, we raided the neighbor's corn patch. That's Frank's. If y'all know Frank, don't tell him I was in there because he'll be coming up there thinking I'm going to cook him a steak for that corn I done stole out of there. But really, we done paid him. And folks, hey, what are we talking about? Grilled corn with some of them great Mexican flavors. I think you might even call it what? Mexican street corn. Because you know why? There was two corn cobs walking down the street. Uh-huh. And they said, hey, no, that's not the way it went, no. Shan. But when you can grill that stuff and get that great caramelization on that corn to bring out all that sweetness and then just roll it in there with some great spices and a little old sauce that goes on top, mm -mm, delicious. But also we got you two more little bonuses. We're gonna throw in there with what? A little hot corn salsa there, but also some grilled corn in the shuck thrown right in there and some corn caviar. Mm -hmm, that makes three more, don't it? So there's a lot of ways to grill this corn and you've seen me pick it and you've seen me sort of pull this back to where we could see them kernels in there. Remember down there at the corn patch? So we're just gonna go ahead. That's I, a good, oh. I just want you to pull them off here. Get your hash knife and just cut this part off right here. <clears throat> And if you find a worm, that is added treasure. Looky there. Is there a worm in there? Uh-huh. <gasps> Ooh. Look at him. Oh, oh. He, he has been eating <laughs> up the corn. And you see me pour out some of that what? Whole oregano and whole cumin. Toast that stuff, folks, in a cast iron skillet. Brings out so much more of that aromatic flavor that you're going to get in there. And guess what? Because we're making this chili lime sauce that goes on that corn. And ooh, it is so good. Pardon me for the bug. There... <laughs> The little link for all the recipe and everything that we be doing and using will be listed right down there below so you ain't going to get lost. But hey, you might think, hey, I think I have seen this recipe somewhere. You have, folks. Guess what? It is time for an infomercial. Page 183, 184 it is. Grilled street corn. Let's just see if it's still in there, Shen, by accident. The right page. I think so. I was just guessing. 180, what's on 184, 185? Woo-wee. Mexican street corn. So to get this started off with, folks, we need some sour cream. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna put about that much in there. Yep. What are we talking about? Y'all turned me on to it about three years ago. Duke's mayonnaise. Best creation that mayonnaise ever had to offer, it is. And we're gonna put some of that in there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this lime juice on, squeeze him in there. Time to put in some of this toasted aromatic flavor, it is. Get them over to one side. We got some cumin and some oregano. If you can get it sort of half and half, you're pretty good, but I guarantee you, you can't go wrong with this deal because you need to make it this ahead of time to where it can sit and all them flavors can blend. A little of that chili powder, mm-hmm. Goodness is coming out. Guess what? We got us some of that there grated Parmesan cheesy and it's got a childproof label on it, Shin. About that much because I like mine to be cheesy cheesy goodness I do we got to have a little garlic powder come on I know you're in there somewhere and folks we're pretty lucky today the wind ain't blowing it plumb over here so we in for a good deal and we're gonna put a little bit of this mesquite seasoning in there because it's got some of that ancho chili in it it does now that I need you to get your apparatus that will mix all this up make sure everybody stays in the bowl and we're going to give it a taste right here at the end to see if we need some more of that lime juice because that one was a very juicy feller he was. Mm, I can smell that toasted cumin and oregano coming out of there. So, take your little old finger. That's, that's, whoa, that stuff right there make you go on to town right there. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing nothing to that. That's what we call getting it on the money the first time. So, let's put this in a place it can chill. We're gonna prep that corn and get it on the grill. Woo wee! You see me get that corn out of that bathtub and dry it off. And why you be drying it off when you could throw it on the fire, cowboy Kent? Well, 
I want to dry it off really good so that olive oil will bond to it a little instead of beating up like water on a duck's back. We have got Bertha fired up. She is ready to go. And guess what? Y'all might have been hearing me talk about this brand new Bertha that's coming out. Ooh, there'll be a little link down there below to where you can find out all the goodness you need to know because this is a work of art. What are we going to do? Lay them on the grill. We have got what we call a really hot fire and we're gonna use a hot fire throughout this process. This corn will pop if you leave it on there too long, folks. So I want you to be checking it, rolling it around. It'll be good to go. Now, a lot of folks gonna be seasoning that corn after they put it on there. But remember that chili lime sauce that we had there? It's got all that stuff mixed in it. It's saving you the process of getting arthritis in your elbow from having to do this to shake the seasoning on there. It won't take long. I guarantee you can roll them corns around. They're going to be some good color, some good caramelization. On a good hot fire like this, three to five minutes, folks, and we're going to be nearly ready to eat some corn. Guess what I got here, Shan? I have got me an ear of corn that we be soaking. This is another option I'm giving you folks. You can just throw it right there on the coal. Y'all might have seen me do that when we was doing the caveman steak video. Make sure you soak it about 15, 20 minutes, and then guess what? We're just gonna throw it right in there and let her do something. I'm gonna give you another tip too when you get this corn and it's just beginning to get a little color on it. And we've got two little specimens here just sitting out here thinking, you know, I need some suntan oil. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna put a little like Duke's mayonnaise on here because it's gonna help that caramelization get there a little quicker. And I just love the flavor that it brings out too. Done deal it is, the corn has popped, it is ready to go, and we didn't even have to sit through the theater to get it. And ooh, don't that look pretty, folks? That good color. Mm. I'm going to the corn patch, Shan. I'm gonna start from the ground and get really, really rolling. I'm gonna grow tall. Ooh. Mm. 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 Oh. Pop that corn right out the top. I'm talking this stuff, folks, is delicious so easy to make there's a lot of corn out there now grocery store farmers markets everything like that but remember hey i told you we was doing it some more ways too so let me get this out of the way and we're gonna what oh hang on shan oh we forgot that guy this fella that sacrificed it all for the fire i want you to see when you pull him off her look at all that color that's under there and them silks will just come right off when they cook like that. We'll just break him right there. Just remember that you gotta soak that corn. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if there was a worm in there, he added protein now. Now remember them two little fellers that set off over by themselves and got lathered with that good Duke's mayonnaise? I like to take them folks, give them a little sprinkle of that mesquite seasoning. It just brings out a so different, unique flavor to me. Mm. We got extra corn, remember? And I told you we was doing some more use. You can easily turn this into a little cast iron skillet corn dip burr. We're gonna mix this sauce right back in it. I just need you to take it, and I just need you just to cut them kernels off there and put them right down in there. Well, off the cob it went and into the cast iron skillet with one pat of Kerrygold butter. Uh-huh. That's about the only precise measurement I got to you. There was 1,364 and seven eighths kernels of corn fell in the skillet there, I counted them. So about three years of corn, we're gonna use this to your desired consistency. Stir all that up, get it mixed in there to where we get them flavors incorporated well. And then we're just gonna take it over here with Bertha, let it heat through, top it with some cheese. Mm. Folks, this is what you call a corn dip that you can use your finger, a spoon, or a chip. Now that leftover corn, there was about four of them left. I just sliced right off the cob because what are we making? What I call cowboy caviar. And there's so many different versions of it. It is, but a lot of them 
I want you to just be using that corn right out of the can. You know that canned corn? Mm -mm, no. We're talking about that grilled corn that's got all that flavor. But then, guess what? We're going to got a poblano pepper, two little bitty jalapenos, about a third of a cup of bell pepper, and some white onion. And I just want you to put that in there. Mm-hmm. I want you to go ahead and give that a stir and give it some mixing because the next thing we got is what? Black eyed peas. There's so many things you can do with black eyed peas. Poor man sausage, black eyed peas and cornbread, black eyed peas and ham, black eyed pea bread, black eyed pea cake, black eyed peas sing a song. What that song the black eyed peas sing, Shed? So I need you just to dump that in there. Give it a good little mixing and look at that colorful, bountiful little dish we have created here, but we ain't through, folks. Mm -mm. Because I like to mix this up about an hour and a half ahead of time and give it a little chance to what? Get all them flavors to incorporate. Flavors? Shin? Flavors. Now we're going to give it a little lime juice, uh huh, because we need some to counteract that sweet corn, and that is the juice of a half of a lime. A little bit of garlic powder. Unless you got some garlic cloves you want to mince in there, that's fine with me too. A little bit of mesquite seasoning. Instead of a little bit, we're going to go about that much. Mix it up. We're going to taste it one time just to see how the flavors have blended. Mmm. Got a little bite, got a little heat, got a little sweet. We're going to put that over there and let it chill. Well, got her all mixed up there. And folks, there's so many different ways that you can fix this dish with some avocado. I've seen people even put some little fruit in it at times. So however you want to make it, just make it a good time. But we're giving you all these good reasons why you can do what? Use grilled corn off the grill. Go to Farmer's Market, load the back of the pickup up, take it home, build you a big fire, and let's roast some corn mm -hmm, right there on the fire. Well, folks, before we go to, we have a special guest that has been with us today in spirit, and that is Martha Bryan. Her youngins contacted us and said it was Martha's dream to always want to cook on a chuck wagon. So we're dedicating this episode to Martha because I know in spirit, she's standing here with me, helping me cook. This was one of her wishes, one of the things that she'd have got to do. But I guarantee you, St. Pete and them got a big wagon up there and they're having a big roundup. And I guess you, I'll bet you, Oh, Martha is a cooking. So thank you for sending this to us. We appreciate it. And Martha, bless you, my love. We know you're doing a good job. But as always, I tip my hat and I thank all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying over camp and keeping me and Shannon and the pup safe every day. For the rest of you, hey, we just so glad to have you. We never take it for granted that you watch. And guess what? God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Mexican street corn whoo trail. called sweat in 92 degrees with humidity. That's what it's called, standing by the fire. People say, that guy ain't real smart. He's smart enough not to stand by it when it's cold. Uh-huh, yep.